So Creative Assembly finally had to issue a real apology, not a bullshit publicist made apology or something that was made by the marketing team. No, they had to make a real ass apology as to what has been going on recently with the Total War games, what's been happening with the franchise, and it seems like for the first time in since I haven't been a, a Total War YouTuber, about almost 10 years it looks like this is the first time that they're finally getting their balls squeezed which is something that should have been happening or should have happened during rome 2 when rome 2 was coming out and the first initial release of rome 2 where without all the bugs all the issues and everything like that they didn't even give an apology like this back then they kind of like swept it under the rug they said that they're gonna fix it they had some issues blah 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 they made excuses in this apology they did not make any excuses and i've seen this going around i wanted to give my take on it seeing as how like this is kind of the reason that i'm back in the total war scene so let's start out with the beginning dear total war fans i'm roger Colum, vice president at creative assembly and writing on behalf of our total war leadership team this is the team that has made everything so far. They're responsible for everything that's happened. So this is their leader here, at least their vice leader. It has been a difficult few months and we recognize that we have made mistakes when it comes to our relationship with you all. No shit. It's been like that since before Attila, guys. It's been a constant conversation internally on how we can get back to the solid ground. What's clear is it won't be easy and that it will take time and effort, obviously. We see the confusion and frustration, the distrust of us across the community, and honestly, it breaks our hearts. Yes, there is massive distrust with Creative Assembly and it's been festering. It's almost like there's been like a rebel faction inside the Total War community. And with, you know, I think Volund, he's the one that's been spearheading it all. And now it's finally broken through the surface and everybody else can kind of see what the hell is going on because of not only a, a snowball effect of all the issues that Creative Assembly has had in the past, but also people are finally realizing like, hey, we deserve much better than this or to be treated much better, especially when it comes to us paying extra like DLC and stuff for video games. We make games to bring you joy, to inspire a love of history or fan of fantasy, more fantasy than anything and strategy games. Total War is our everything. We care about it as deeply as you are. As you recently, it is clear that we have failed to demonstrate that in our actions. We are sorry. I wish this would have said I am sorry, but I will take we are sorry. We cannot fix our issues overnight, but we will work towards a more transparent and consistent relationship with you all. Total War is a big complex ship to steer built on decade. Okay, so the rest of this right here is just a bunch of this is where it kind of like the excuses are coming, but it's not like this is only a little bit of excuses here. That's why I'm saying I kind of read all of this already, but uh, I'm giving you guys my take on it right now. So they're going to talk about the challenges with Warhammer and Pharaoh. So the main issue with Warhammer 3 that everyone has had recently is Shadows of Change. It is the DLC that Milking Cookies has been milking uh, for the past few months, even though he says he hasn't made any videos on it. I mean, you know, that's not true. And so this is what he says. We, we have listened to your feedback on Shadows of Change, and we know that we have failed to meet your expectations for what a DLC should be. Yeah, it is basically thievery what they've done here. To address that, we are enhancing our offer to everyone who have purchased who purchased Shadows of Change with more content and a commitment to ensuring that we better meet your expectations going forward. So I I mean I think that that's a good thing, but I again it's like it's hard to trust them, you know. So whatever comes, I'm not gonna know about it because I don't play Warhammer Three and I definitely didn't buy the DLC. So it's just gonna be on the community like what new changes are gonna come the shadows of change that you guys are going to like or, or be okay with basically um and so it says we're, we're targeting a major update to shadows of change and will arrive for free for everyone on its own in february it looks like that launch date is our ambition but this isn't concrete it may move so they're being realistic on when all this free stuff's going to come out when we return in a year you'll hear directly from game director richard aldridge and the warhammer 3 team who will start to talk to you about what this expansion to shadows of change will look like making this right is important to us and to do this properly thrones of decay will move out of its intended release window of winter 2023 we're looking to launch it 
in the DLC in April 2024. Okay, that's what you should be doing. You shouldn't be just shooting things out there without any preparation. It looks like they're saying that Thrones of Decay is not finished and they're and they were basically forced to push uh, Thrones of Decay forward and using the excuse of them adding new and free content to the, to the uh, Shadows of Change. That looks like exactly what they're talking about here. I don't know. Um, because they're just saying that, you know, they have more work to do on, on the, on this new DLC that they're coming out with, which again, I don't know, D these DLC, man, we'll make sure that you know exactly what, co what is coming in Throws of Decay before pre-orders are available and make sure that you have full transparency around the content before you see the buy now buttons. I guess that's okay. And so the rest of it is just talking about the fact that they're going to be, you know, adding more content to Warhammer 3 and they're going to be working on Warhammer 3. Um, that stuff is great for the Warhammer community. I'm glad that they're getting it. I don't really care. I don't play Warhammer 3 anymore, so I don't give a shit. And I'm not going to be playing Total War Fair either, but I am interested in what they say here. We want to make you aware of the decision that we've made internally surrounding this game, which is Total War Pharaoh, and what to expect with the DLC that we've been working on. There's some important information here that affects all owners of the game, so please read through this part carefully. If you're an owner of the game, I think I read this. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but basically what they're saying is that you're going to be getting like a discount, basically. So the game's going to go from, I think, 60 to 40. So you're going to get $20 back to your Steam wallet. And if you paid for the bigger version, which I don't know who would have, but if you paid for like the deluxe or dynasty version, you're going to get that mon money refunded because they're not going to be, I don't know if they're going to be giving you that those benefits anymore that you got with those, or you're just not going to do that anymore. I have no idea. They're adding more updates to the game. And um, the rest of it is basically they're going to add more stuff to Total War Pharaoh. They're, it's like Total War Pharaoh has a long window of, of being able to uh, have new content added to it. I'm assuming new civilizations, making it a proper Bronze Age Total War game is what they're hinting at here. And so they're going to they're gonna be committed to this game and giving us more for Pharaoh. The issue here, and I'll be honest with you, the issue here is that they've already, like to add more stuff to games that people didn't buy is wasting time and energy. And they're saying, I don't want to be leaving uh, like Pharaoh out in the cold because I didn't buy it and it would screw over the people that did. It. I know that pain, trust me. I, I love Three Kingdoms and they just abandoned it. So I understand what it's like playing a game that they've abandoned and they're not gonna go back to. Trust me, I understand that full wholeheartedly here. But I do think that I, their their energy and their money, especially if they're hemorrhaging money, it should go toward new projects and something that people are going to be excited about. Because if you have Pharaoh and you add, I don't know, the Greeks, you add the Mesopotamian civilization, you add the sea people as playable. And I'm assuming like, I'm trying to think of like all the Bronze Age uh, civilizations that are around there and add more errors to the map. Maybe some people will buy because of that. But if this was just held up two or three more years, right? Pharaoh was held up two or three more years, and when it came out, it had everything in there. And instead of being called Total War Pharaoh, it would it was called Total War Bronze Age. That would be that would have made a lot of money because it's it's a new coat of paint. Like we would be seeing it as oh, it's a Bronze Age game. What we've all been talking about for years. I know when I was in the Total War community, that's what we talked about too, Bronze Age. And I always wanted to play a Bronze Age game. And so that would have been something that they could have worked on before shipping it out. But they ship out things that are not released yet and shouldn't and and, and with less uh, less amount of work. And, and the reason they do that is because they ship out these games half finished. So you pay a full price for a half finished game. And then after that, the years come by, you have these DLCs and expansions that are for the game that would have been for a fully released game, but you're paying for it now piecemeal. So that's kind of how they make their money and it's really shady. And I have no excitement for them adding more stuff to the Pharaoh game. I am glad that people who play Warhammer 3 are getting more stuff because that game already has a lot of DLC and a lot of people are excited to pay for that. So the community is already there for Warhammer 3 and there's nothing really that is going to be shaking that because that community is very strong and that's why they're so with the with the way that this DLC came out that was the push that really brought out the re, the the rebellion essentially to the surface it's almost like the empire and the rebellion in star wars like that that them turning on ca was what brought all these uh 
problems and what brought them to fix these problems. I'm telling you right now, if nothing, if there was no complaint, if the Shadows of Change did not come out with this complaints or nobody bitched about it the way they, are, they, they did with the game came out, then they would have just pushed out this other game, this other um, DLC, the Decay DLC out in winter, fully unfinished, like they were planning to do, like they were planning to do. They even said it. It was unfinished. They're gonna push it back now because of the fact, and they're making the excuse that Shadows of Change is gonna get free stuff, and that's why they're gonna push it back. When, in in all honesty, they would have just kept pushing out bullshit DLC, and so the bitching and the complaining and the criticism really got to them this time, and they would much have rather have, you know, you just buy these DLC for Warhammer and just shut up, basically. And now they are really pissed off. They have to basically give you things for free, give you give you more stuff for free and um and really give you more of what is going on with pharaoh because i guarantee you pharaoh was done pharaoh was done they probably were going to add the sea peoples as playable and then that was it i guarantee you that pharaoh had nothing else added to it but now they're hinting they're going to add other civilizations to the game and expand the map all these different things and they were not going to do that before i guarantee fucking to you they were never going to do that and so if, if you like pharaoh if you already have it then great for you you may get more to the game if you already like it i've never played it but i think that they're again it's just they're going to be giving things to these game this game specifically that doesn't have much of a player base like at all more people are playing medieval 2 and shogun 2 that are playing pharaoh so you're kind of wasting your time at this point you should have just taken the l and been like all right we're gonna scrap pharaoh uh and and, and claim it on our taxes and then we're gonna do something else at this point now because pharaoh is basically just a reskin of troy essentially so I don't know. You guys may have faith in this. I've seen a lot of people already say, like Andy's take. Andy's take has faith that they're learning their lesson. I don't think so. I think that they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar and they're like, now they're backtracking, like, oh no, we're always going to be doing, we're always going to, you know, give you guys more stuff for Pharaoh. Like, and trust me, we were going to ship out the Decay DLC before it was ready, you know, like, we're going to add more stuff to it. Now we have the opportunity to give you guys more phrase stuff that should have already been in the Change DLC. Like, it just, Again, it's just they are they had to apologize, they had to you know show it. Do not believe this apology. They do not they are just more worried about the fact that their money is now is now being caught up in this in the, these two games. And I guarantee you this means that any sort of other game, any any new Total War game, now it has been pushed back uh to maybe even past next year to 2025. Garen fucking teed. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.